Wow. Oscar Valdez has never faced an African-American fighter in his pro career. Wow. What up, fight world? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you come in, smash the like button, and the best in the business. Now, I seen a lot of boxing fans were talking about this. Apparently, somebody noticed, somebody said it in my comment section, it was Shakur Stevenson's trainer and his grandfather that Oscar Valdez hasn't really faced many black opponents, African-American opponents, right? And I've seen enough people in my comment section were saying, hey, Oscar Valdez never fought a black person. Me, at first, I didn't really even think much of it. I was just like, all right. And I guess the reason is I was under the impression that Oscar Valdez hadn't faced many black fighters. But upon further review, he hasn't faced any black fighter, like really and truly. And I was on my Instagram and a lot of people were leaving the comment too. So I was talking about this in my live stream. And in my live stream, I literally went through the box wreck. You guys can find it on the channel. I went through the box wreck and not to stereotype, but I was looking for names that sounded like they were ethnic or that it could possibly be a black person or maybe just a name that rings a bell that I've heard of. And I literally couldn't find one. And I was not only going off of names, I was clicking on each person's box rec profile and their picture. And it really looks like Oscar Valdez has never faced an actual black person. On my live stream, the closest people were saying was Robson Consacial, who is maybe the darkest complected guy or one of them that he's faced in his career, but he's from Brazil. So I'm talking about more of a an American style, right? So to step in with the Shakur Stevenson, who is at the top of his class in terms of not just black fighters, but just fighters in general. Shakur Stevenson said he puts himself number one pound for pound. He's been watched for quite some time. I think this is an interesting fact. And it's not just because of ethnicity or race or or whatnot. But we all know that the American style is amongst the best in most elite. That's not my opinion. This is look in the history books. You can look at all of the legends that came from America. Now, in my opinion, there's some areas that are. I would say America and Mexico have probably produced more fighters in the top 50 if you were to look at like a historical chart of all the top fighters, right? And that being said, America has produced the Mike Tysons, the Tommy Morrisons, Ray Morris, or Ray Mercer, Floyd Mayweather, Roy Jones Jr., Shane Mosley, Pernell Whitaker, the list goes on and on and on. Sugar Ray Robinson, Leonard, right? And to think that Oscar Valdez is getting ready to fight Shakur Stevenson, again, who in this generation, he's amongst the top in terms of skills. I've already done several videos and Shakur don't get hit much. He's not a guy that's easy to hit. I also interviewed his sparring partner, who said more of the same. He said, man, Shakur, he gonna get Valdez, right? And that'll be up on the channel shortly. So the body language of Valdez also looks a little bit skittish. They did the weigh-in today and Shakur was staring him down. And every time Valdez goes to face off with Shakur Stevenson, he looks a bit concerned. And, and me, I'm not a person that really looks too deeply into face-offs more often than not, because People were saying Errol Spence looked away first versus Ugas, but when the fight happened, he mollywhopped Ugas, right? And dominated. So I don't really look too much into that. But with the Oscar Valdez, there are isolated incidents. I do it on a case by case basis. And I really feel like the Valdez, first of all, Shakur Stevenson chased Valdez for several years and to no avail. And as soon as Terrence Crawford files a lawsuit against Top Rank claiming a bias towards him being a black fighter and basically mistreating him in terms of not making him a marquee star 
Then Bob Arum changed what he had previously said months before and made this fight. Previously, if you guys look at the actual interviews, Bob Arum was saying that he wanted to make a fight with Miguel Berchelt and Shakur Stevenson and make Oscar Valdez versus Navarrete, another Hispanic person. And if you look at, as this video is mentioning, you look at Oscar Valdez's whole resume and majority of the opponent's names that he has fought are Hispanic or Latino fighters, right? You'll see like Gonzalez's and, you know, the different people that he fought, Berchelt, etc. Adam Lopez, just look at it. You guys don't take my word for it. I make these videos so you guys can hear the message and then do your own independent research. But that was rather shocking to me because I think that's a that's a maybe a bridge too far. I was always picking Shakur Stevenson, but this makes me even more confident in my pick because it's not just about fighting a black person. It's about fighting multiple diverse fighters with diverse styles. And it's, it's weird that Eddie Reynoso and the Canelo gym gets a lot of praise and I see them spar black fighters, but Canelo people haven't seen him get to fight um, a fight like Demetrius Andrade, who was on the zone at the same time as Canelo, who was on HBO at the same time as Canelo and Jamal Charlo and stuff like that. So Eddie Reynoso already mentioned on record that fighting black fighters or African-American fighters are difficult. So it's looking like the NBF list in boxing is absolutely true. And that stands for no black fighters. And that was coined by top rank and exposed by Cameron Duncan in a recent interview. And you continue to see the black murderers row. How is it that Oscar Valdez is 30 and 0 or whatever his record is, and he's 31 years old and Shakur Stevenson is literally the first black fighter and he's been fighting in America so it's not like he he stayed like he's from Mexico and then he moved to Arizona. You know what I'm saying? So how it just is mind boggling in those divisions, especially when you have guys that fit that that bill that he probably could have fought like Gary Russell Jr. or some Joseph Jojo Diaz fought Gary Russell Jr. He fought Tevin Farmer. Right. He fought Devin Haney. But you have Oscar Valdez, who's literally never fought a black person. And again, when you guys were saying that in the comment section, I was hearing and reading it. But. I didn't think you meant literally. If you guys could think of an actual, and don't say Robson Concesio, an actual black person, black American fighter that Valdez has fought, tell me the date and, you know, link out his box rec so I could look it up. But from my research, after researching it, what you guys were saying, I ain't seen nobody. So shout out to Shakur Stevenson's grandfather for picking that out. And let me know what you guys think. Does this change anything? Are you picking Valdez? Are you picking Stevenson? In the last 30 days, I looked at my YouTube analytics and it showed me that 50% of the people that watch my content for March subscribed. The other 50% did not. Let me know what I could do to earn your subscription in the world of boxing. I'm the best in boxing. If you want boxing news, this is your one-stop shop. So hit the subscribe button. Worst case scenario, unsub if you're not feeling the content. I will be back tomorrow with Shakur Stevenson, Oscar Valdez, the Boxing Ingo Watch Party. So make sure you join me for that as well. Hit the like button as always. Hey, comment and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation.